welcome back. Uh, today what I'm going to be doing is step tuning uh, the soundboard of the, of the octave mandolin. Uh, I'm going to be tap tuning the uh, inside tone bars. Uh, for this I'm going to need a uh, Strobel Soft Stroke Tuner, a mic, and I do not have a compressor. Compressor would hold uh, the tone from the hip uh, with a little dead blow hammer. And uh, what that does is it helps the computer uh, read the actual tap tone or, or the, the note that uh, the, the hit on the wood gave. So um, it's still doable, it's just that you have to be mindful that there's going to be a lot of overtone. So basically whenever you hit your, your uh, mandolin or your soundboard, like right now I have D3 plus 15. Um, it's it's the sound board bit, but it's also the tone bar. So now, when when I want to tune uh, one tone bar, I'm gonna have to isolate that tone bar. So basically, what I do is I use a little piece of leather, and then I put a clip on it to prevent it from vibrating. And that that isolates that one. So now all I have is this tone bar and the whole assembly. So I already know that uh, it's uh, D3 plus 15 cents uh, that the whole assembly is reading. So whenever I'm going to hit this tone, this tone bar here, I'm going to have reading for either uh, the whole assembly or just the tone bar. So from there, I'll be able to start shaving this one and get it to a target tuning uh, and then I have to shape both of them at the same time because when this one loses uh, stiffness, the other one, uh, it, it, it all works together. So the other one's going to lose some stiffness also. So my main focus here, although I'm going to do my best to show on the camera what's, what's happening, will be to make sure that this is, uh, that the, the soundboard is where I want it. It's possible in the process that I don't get the camera shots that I would like to give you. Uh, I, like I said, I'll do my best, but at the same time, my main focus is uh, to get this instrument uh, where I want it. So this is the strobe tuner, and you can see it's moving as I'm talking because it's picking up every little uh, uh, noise. Um, so if I tap uh, my soundboard, You can see it's uh, at D3 uh, plus this one, this time it was showing 12. Um, so that's pretty close to what, what I said earlier. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is isolate tone bars and then I'm going to try to uh, figure out where I stand on the tone bars. So the way the I'm going to be tuning the, the tone bars is I'll be using a little uh, plane, I guess we can call it a mini block plane, and I'll be shaving some wood. Uh, I do have my notepad here, so after I do get my first readings, I'll be able to decide which tone bars I have to start shaving first to adjust um, uh, my uh, to adjust my uh, my pitch or my notes. Uh, the target I'm having right now is like, for example, if my treble uh, gets to a D sharp. I would need the bass to get to a C sharp. So the the full step is um, like we want a full step in between the treble and uh, the bass. Uh, the bass being on a lower uh, note than the the treble. treble side, uh, tone, uh, treble tone bar, and um, the the reading I had on camera is not the same that I found after. My reading after was uh, B flat third octave minus twenty cents. So that's what you'll see in my uh, in my uh, notebook. Uh, on the bass side right now, you can see I'm I'm struggling with having the sound of the soundboard, which is the uh, third octave that we figured out at the beginning and now I'm even changing octaves so there's a lot of overtones but the E flat that I have right now um, 
is what was coming out uh, the most and that's for the base side and you'll see uh, uh, following that the, I ended up with uh, a constant uh, for the base bar E flat third octave minus 38 So the base side is E flat minus 38. Uh, roughly four steps to go with the treble, uh, and the base side has to about a step and a half. So by removing wood on this side, that's gonna lower this one as well. So what I'm gonna start doing is just shaping uh, the the tone bar to uh, a profile shape, and then I'll I'll double check again where I'm at. So I've been at it for about half hour now and, and uh, going back and forth obviously and this is how my treble side is shaping up. I'm at A plus 7 and then my bass is down to uh, minus 23. I removed more on the treble side uh, because like I said the gap was bigger but at the same time I need to lower my bass so we have uh, something similar in, uh, in uh, tension. Uh, my soundboard overall is lowering down as well, but I'm not really keeping track of that uh, for now. Like I, I, what I want to bring down is those two, and uh, I'll keep working at it. This is for the treble side. So uh, my stroke tuner is telling me I'm at uh, E flat plus nine. Um, at this point, like my target tuning was D sharp, which is basically E flat. It's it's the same note. So uh, what what I need to do is like go very very slowly on to my wood removal and then uh, double checking at the same time on the other side because uh, on the other side I'm already uh, in the, the C sharp plus 45 so uh showing you the, the two reading the first one is D sharp uh, plus two cents uh, that's for the, the treble side and the bass side is at C sharp uh, plus two cents so the, the tuning of the tone bar is done uh, I hope it was enough for you guys to kind of understand how the whole process works um, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some questions that are going to be in the comments, so right away I'm going to try to answer them uh, as best as I can. Usually the first comment is like, okay, so what happens when you you send the top? Like, you already tuned the tone bars and now you send the top, so you, you're changing the whole aspect of what you just tuned. Um, or in this case, like, we're going to be gluing the fretboard onto this section here. Then when the, the fretboard is glued, I'm going to shape back like just to the, the size of the fretboard so there's going to be wood removed here 
plus the fretboard is going to add stiffness. So, so what's the big deal with uh, tuning those stone bars? Uh, what we were doing basically it was to uh, create a difference in stiffness. Like uh, the we have a full tone difference right now, and even if we change anything else, like if we sand the top, if we glue that on, the stiffness is going to increase. When we remove the wood, it's going to uh, uh, the stiffness is going to be a, a, a bit less. But the whole idea of those stone bars will stay the same, and that's what we were after. Uh, once the instrument is fully closed, the neck is on, fretboard's on, and we do the last tuning, which is called voicing. The voicing will be those apertures. We're, we're going to be going around and like shaping them, like opening them up until we get to a perfect note hitting the bridge on a fully uh, tensioned instrument. Um, at this stage, uh, when when I first started, uh, I, I tapped the instrument, and well, like you, you saw in the video, but obviously you didn't hear it on the the mic of the camera. Uh, it was just like a maybe a, a second and a half ring, maybe getting close to two. Uh, right now, and I did try to to put um, this segment in the video, but it doesn't it doesn't come out uh, well. I hit. The, the soundboard and there's like a ring that lasts for about four to five seconds so this like that tells me like we're gonna have a great sustain with uh, this instrument so I, I'm really really happy right now uh, another thing that uh, uh, the actual person that commissioned me to build this instrument was asking was uh, about if the the abrasion patch that I put in here uh, to prevent uh, cracking and checking if that was going to affect the whole sound of the instrument. So basically, yes it does, it adds some stiffness. But as you guys just saw, we tune the stiffness of the soundboard with, with the tone bars. So by adding those uh, patch first and then tuning it, we tune them with the, the whole instrument. So uh, I would like to uh, share with you guys, like, if it's something that you guys uh, uh, would like to learn more about, there's a, a book called The Art of Tap Tuning by Roger Simonoff. Uh, that's a book, like I have a, a bunch of books, I'm not going just with Roger Simonoff, but this book on tap tuning is a great guide. Inside there's uh, uh, tables of frequency that I, I just used to visually see where I was at with my tone bar. So, it's, it's a great guide and there's great information, so I highly recommend it. And um, I guess this is, this is it for this video. Uh, next step will be to get started onto the backboard. Um, and then um, also I'll, I'll go around and sand and clean all the glue residue I might have inside and make sure everything's nice and then uh, we'll be able to get started on the the backboard and then installing the backboard on there so uh, I hope to see you guys uh, when we get to that video I hope this answer this video answers a, a lot of questions that people might ask I know there's not a lot of uh, good videos on uh, tap tuning so like I said I did my best with my main focus being on this instrument so um, so once again I want to thank you guys for watching and uh, until next time I wish you well